Alrighty. So let's talk about Hurricane 2.0 or how it's called now. So as for now, we've got 70 million particles with an old format. It's uh, faster than it was before when I last showed it, the demo version. However, as you can see, it still takes about 200 milliseconds per frame. And uh, as you can see, it's still spawning some new particles, so as it will be filled with particles, it will be much, much slower. And uh, as you can see, it looks kind of good, like the monkey is properly collided, etc. And here we can see all those little details. Also after zooming in, however, Yes, now it takes 300, over 300 uh, milliseconds per frame. And it will be even worse. And it will be around, in the final form, it will be around 400 milliseconds per frame. Uh, so it's not bad as it's 70 million particles uh, in real, almost real time. Mm, and it's, it is uh, in this 400 milliseconds, it is simulating, rendering, reshuffling, blah, blah, blah. Uh, however, it is slow. Oh yeah, now it's done. Mm with spawning new particles, so it will be a little bit faster when the mm, compression of the fluid will be a little bit smaller then it is a little bit faster, but it's not acceptable for me because it's not real time. So I was working on a known technique called the narrow band fluid However, the narrowband fluid works only for the flip type of the simulation, and it is an SPH. And even if some people made it for SPH, it needed the normal grid. And I wanted uh, the gridless narrowband simulation. So I had to do my own technique for that. And it is not necessarily the narrow band simulation. Mm, I mean, it takes some principle that there is the narrow band and there is the surface particles and the inside particles, but it works on a total different manner. However, if I change now it for my technique, uh, then, I mean, it is not ideal, and there are still some bugs, and uh, uh, it is not 100% accurate. I mean, the it works almost as good as the standard SPH. However, as you can see, like there are some weird artifacts, and. Uh, it's a little bit unstable. I mean, the results looks as good as it should look. I mean, there are the hidden particles which are uh, colliding with the which are colliding with the mesh, and there are also a lot of detail. However, all those small splashes are gone, unfortunately, for now. As you can see, like the waves are there, the collision is there. There are just those little bands that there are. I don't know why, yet, but I will. Uh, I will fix that. And as you can see now, 
it is about 100 milliseconds per frame for the same level of detail uh, so it is like three four times faster and as you can see like it also shows just the narrow band but it could show everything but I wanted to distinguish them not only by the speed but also by the uh, look of it and it is a little bit easier to spot the artifacts when only the narrowband particles are shown and as you can see like here we have this uh, little horizontal bands that are looking like the lack of particles but this is only the lack of the surface particles and the hidden particles are there so it's not like there will be the loss of the velocity or the loss of volume etc uh, all of that is working properly just the visualization is not there yet but it will be fixed in the next uh, releases and if I have enough time and as you can see like it is working quite correctly for the most of the part <laughs> and Yes, now it is about 140 milliseconds per frame, so a little bit slower than it should be. But it is still for the level of detail of the 70 million particles. So, and yes, here we've got some little splashes. So it's not like they're not there, but I will have to add some secondary particles to make it look as good as the dense uh, simulation however it works gridless for now so that's the big big achievement and it works faster uh, so yeah this is the update of my s liquid simulator so uh, thank you thank you very much for yeah listening looking etc and uh, hope you like it so yes peace